Hello, hello. Yes, Zanny, it should say starting soon. I always have a starting soon screen up prior to me actually uh, starting the stream. Just gives me a chance to get things going, make sure that everyone can see and hear the stream but it um, gives me space to still kind of be loading into stuff or uh, making sure that, you know, final mic checks and get myself situated and whatnot. So, yes. Zanny, if you, if you do start watching more streams out and about, 
just letting you know, I, I think it is pretty common uh, for people to have something like a starting soon or even like a thank you slash stream ending screen. Uh, so it's usually just an indication that they want you to know that they're live and they're like about to start. Um, so people could start like, you know, arriving and stuff, but not necessarily full on um, ready to go just yet. But yeah, hello, hello, everybody. Hi, Laura. Hi, TK Maple. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Sorry, my, my game is being very, very slow. I've been loading into Gridania for like the last minute. Weird. Boom, there it is. Okay, finally. Sweet. Hello. Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. How's everybody's Thursday going so far? Oh, shit. Oh, Laura, it's your it's you and Fluffy's B day. Happy birthday! Damn! All right. Happy birthday, Alora. Are you doing anything fun or special for your birthday? Like dinner, dinner in a movie, uh, going out to, you know, whatever, uh, treat yourself a little bit, you know? And I'm doing well, Zanny. Just, uh, yeah, I, um, that our hangout and stuff last night was awesome. After, for those of you who, uh, are aware that I had prominence. My nightclub was open last night. And then actually after the nightclub ended, I ended up um, doing a little impromptu after party hangout at the FC house here. And we had uh, Joe Segal come with his bard. I think it's, uh, what is it? Sextet or uh, quintet? He had, um, um, yeah, he came over with his bards and performed for us and then we were all just like chatting and talking nerdy about design and housing and Final Fantasy and all kinds of stuff and uh, we had like a nice little crowd here out in the outdoor amphitheater and it was a really nice time and that ended up lasting for way 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 longer than I anticipated um, but in a very good way like it was really really cool to get a chance to uh, talk to everybody a little bit more one-on-one -on -one and get to know everyone and uh yeah stuff stuff that we don't often get a chance to do as much of and yeah i was really pleasantly surprised with how many people decided to come out to that and come hang out with us and it was a really nice time i i was very happy with how that went but i also stayed up quite a bit later than i was planning to uh and um did not was not able to get as many of the items prepared for today as I originally intended, uh, but that's okay. You know, sometimes that's uh, that's how it happens. So I am gathering some stuff, and I am probably gonna need to take a quick run out to the other room, also to grab some coffee and stuff. Uh, but overall. We're ready to rock and roll. We're gonna keep going on this Japanese feudal temple rebuild. Um, and again, for anybody who was not on the previous stream, what I am doing is I, one of the, um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. I, have, I have this all ready to go. Okay, yeah. So 
just uh, for anybody who was not on the previous stream, and I'll, I'll say this once or twice throughout the streams to make sure people everyone's on, make sure everyone's on the same page. But um, a back when I first was getting into housing back in uh, late 2020, when I first got my first small house, this the second build that I ever really worked on was this Japanese feudal temple. This one posted it here on my Twitter, and um. That's how I know when it was, too. It helps remind me. Uh, so I posted this January 19th, 2021, and I was working on it there for, for probably a couple months before that. And this was done in a small house. There you go. There's the temple. This is so the, the main part that I'm rebuilding is this, because there was actually more to the temple. There was an out uh, exterior, and there was even an upstairs here in the small. But because I'm in a, I'm going to rebuild this in an apartment because I don't have my small house anymore. And I've always though wanted to recreate parts of this temple, especially the main interior, because I never really got a chance to properly document it. And really, uh, I think a lot of people would like, would be, it'd be cool to be able to show people. So I'm actually now recreating um, this in my apartment and seeing if I can make a run at making that happen. Oh, hey, hey, Selena, coming in with that tier one sub. Thank you very much, Selena. I really appreciate that. Damn, wait, and you've been subscribed for six months? There we go, dude, half a year. Holy crap. That's, yeah. Thank you very, very much, Selena for all your continued support. Let's see, oh, actually, I don't need to come over here. I can just go straight to the apartment, I think. Um, how are you doing, Selena? And I did get some sleep, Zanny. A, a bit. <laughs> um, I ended up sleeping a, a little longer than I was planning to, uh, but yeah, I did get some sleep, so. Brain is kind of warming up or like finishing warming up still, but I am, I'm here, I'm ready. We got, we got this. And Alora said, I did a bunch, a uh, bunch with some fam, but you're gonna celebrate more on Saturday. Oh, fun, okay, cool. Uh, Are you gonna, What do you, if you don't mind sharing, I'm kind of curious, like, I, I mean, so do you have uh, big plans for the weekend? Going anywhere special or something? What's up, Zara, Teague, and Liara? Well, Teague, Teague was here earlier, but uh, Zara, I can still say hello again to you, Teague, but uh, hi, Zara and uh, Liara. Welcome back to the stream as always. And pretty well, says Selena, just, uh, just listening to listening to Roth and remembered something I was gonna do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Oh, that's right. Roth is uh, DJing right now, I think, too, right? Heck yeah. Oh, and Selena, thank you so much for gifting the tier one sub to Ray. The TFK. Thank you, thank you. Ah. Uh, Ray, you have a tier one sub now. Selena did tell me this last night that they noticed that um, one of my one of my mods was not actually subscribed right now, so they wanted to gift a sub to them, and uh, there they are, following through with that from last night. Thank you very much, Selena. I, I appreciate that. And as I say to to those who get subs, Ray, it's time to go crazy with the the glow sticks and the hardy modes. I grabbed a bunch of items for use today. I think there's a chance that I might even be continuing building this on next Monday as well. Just because I might need to craft a few more things, like the some of the ceiling things. We'll see. I was going to see. 
I was kind of checking on some of the prices of stuff earlier. Um, so we will have to either crash or whew, excuse me, acquire some of these items. Um, But I think we can probably get most of it done. Um, blah, 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 blah. Wait, what was, I just want, it's the hang of the word. Okay, okay. So I need, I think the big items that I still, oh right, uh, Eastern Inner Ponds. I have the materials for that now. So yeah. <laughs> exactly. Dance party. I mean, it can, it can be a dance party. It can still, it can always, it's always time to dance, right? Um, 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 uh. Oh, by the way, yeah. Uh, if if some of you guys want to come chill while I'm making the stuff, you're more than welcome to come join. I'm at my apartment right now. Uh, which the address is... That should be the address there. It's right below the gameplay footage. So if anybody does want to come by and just like hang out and watch me build, you're more than welcome to do so. And of course... As always, I encourage people to also just um, to just come, or rather, to just build along with me on stream or whatever, you know, if you want to just hang out. Oh, that's not too bad. Woo! Man, double feather beds used to be so crazy expensive. I think I might need even more of these, but um, I'm going to start with this now. Oh, what's the tier four aquarium? All right, I think I need one more tier four aquarium to make this happen. That's not too bad. All right, I'm going to run with it. Boom, there it is. Okay. Oh, thank you, everyone, for the hydrates. I, I, I have, I do have my water with me. Hydrate with me. And yeah, you're right, Zanny. It could be because of the feathers. Um, or rather, I know that there's a number of items that it's like it's just time nodes. It's not hard to get, but it's just kind of like you can't just gather an infinite amount instantly. And also because they're very popular, because they're very useful for, for housing and stuff. So, as I was uh, showing earlier, right, so what I'm recreating is within my apartment here, I am attempting... Oops, that's the wrong one. Uh, here we go. Um, I'm attempting to recreate this, which was originally built in the bottom floor of a small, but it's going to be here in my apartment. So we've already laid the foundation for this, and basically today I'm going to try to keep going and build this out even further. And um, yeah, the, the idea here is just to challenge myself to see if I can basically shrink down the, the concept that will so that it will now fit in an apartment. And then also just um, maybe have a little fun with like expanding on it or editing some things that I wouldn't have known how to do back in the day or i didn't know how to do or we didn't have the items for but now we do so the entryway here for example might be reworked a little bit based off of new items like eastern indoor ponds and some stuff that we did not have available way back when i first was making this but now that we do uh i think it offers some cool possibility so
let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. Can this? Okay. I'm um, before I start laying out the ceiling and kind of like actually finalizing the position of some of these things. Uh, a big thing right now that I'm looking at is how do I want to do this outside and do I need to nudge any of these foundational elements forward or backward a little bit to better account for like what I'm going to do out here? And I do think actually the short answer is yes, because I think what's going to happen is I want this to do be like this. Well, okay, these will be lower, but I don't want that gap that I had right there, right? Um, if you saw on this side, there's this little spacer here, and that bugs me a lot. So I'm going to try to nudge these all over, probably pull these forward, and then that way we can have like a nice, clean wall-to-wall um, -wall thing here without having to use an extra piece or anything like that. Originally, the way I had the temple was there was an exterior area. You can see it in this photo where there was actually like some grating outside the temple because the idea was that you're walking up to an abandoned temple. And so you had to walk on some factory grates and stuff that had like un un uh, undergrowth happening below it. And then walk over like a little bridge to get to the temple itself. And there was even like the big temple exterior and everything. Um, but I think given the limitations of an apartment, I think that's not going to really work. We, I mean, we just don't have the, the space, the length that a small would have. So I am going to modify this part of the design. And I think I'm going to push every, I'm going to pull rather everything forward a little bit to try to help with that. Oh, also, I realized, did I not put a going, I don't think I put a going live. Oops. One moment, let's put that going live. Little bit, little bit, uh, uh, oh, why is that not going? That's weird. Hmm. Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, so we're going to pull all this stuff forward by like a click or two, just to make sure it aligns here. Let's turn off this. Why is that being so weird? I think it's two clicks forward to get, oh, maybe three? Yeah, three. Oh, we'll have a lot of room in the back here, I think. Oh, you know, I know why though, um, actually that it needed to be pushed as far back as it was. So this is a good reminder. This is why I put this stool here. Uh, for those of you who remember from the first stream. So I put the stool there because when you load into the apartment, you're gonna load right here. And I think it's too jarring to load and immediately be like faced with this big jump up. And unfortunately in an apartment, we can test this, but I do not believe that this will let you load on top of this troop stage. I think it's too high. In fact, I think probably, I almost, I know it's too high, but I think you might be able, can you get it to load on top of a loft? Let's try this, let's test this out. If I go outside this building and I go back inside, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna load right into the middle of a troop stage which is not what we want. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. Hello, hello. Is the apartment closed? There we go. There you guys are. Hello. Ah, yeah. See, you get, like, thrown into the middle of this thing. And that is not good. This really disrupts pe would disrupt people's immersion if you were to load into the middle of this. So, we're going to account for this like good architects would and give people space. Even if that means that we will have to now address the fact that there is the gap in the front here. But perhaps we can figure out something clever to do about that. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 no. Where was it? There's these. There we go. Remove lotus leaves. I think I'm going to be wanting to craft some more eastern indoor ponds, so I'm grabbing these out. Is it is it growth formula kappa that I need for the? No, I don't actually think I need growth formula kappa for the indoor ponds. Here we go. Eastern. Oh, there it is, Ray. Yeah, Selena gave you a gifted sub. Congrats, Ray. Search. Okay, we got granite. We just need some under underground spring water. Easy to get. Easy, easy, easy. Um, where is that again? It's over near the... Uh, in the first... I got the granite gathering method. I'm just going to quickly smack some rocks really quick and grab this so I don't have to pay. There's no reason to buy this. There you go, hey! Using the hearts for the first time. I love it. Arashtra, I don't think it's the first time. I think, I mean, it's like, uh, just, you now are resubbed. What's everyone working on, by the way? Um, how I, I know a lot of people are often building whilst I am building here. Well, I, I guess I'm gathering at this very moment, but generally speaking, you guys are building and doing stuff. What's everyone working on? Also, I'll be right back, guys, for who are at my apartment. I'm just going to quickly grab a bunch of this so that I can make these indoor ponds. Simple, simple. I think that's plenty, right? I'll grab a little extra just in case. That, that's the, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh. Got to pop out of the stream for a bit. We should be back. No worries, Liara. We'll see you in a bit then. Back to the apartment. Here we go. Ha, ha, ha. 
Liara, you must stay for Alora's birthday. Oh, and you got some emotes for the club after you logged out last night. Nice. Which ones did you get? Which ones did you get, Zanny? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. And Strangers and Wilson, welcome back to the stream. Hello, working on your personal build. Ooh, going for a modern loft. Using yourself to, forcing yourself to use bright color scheme for the first time. I feel that, yeah, you know, I, um, I was working on the modern stuff for the first time recently as well, and I feel ya. It's a good challenge though, honestly, right? It's like a good design, like a good growth opportunity as a designer to challenge yourself to build in a style that you don't typically build in. Because I definitely think that you end up learning a lot and then you can apply that to the builds that you're, I guess, more typical of yourself. How's it coming along? How, are you are you having fun with the uh, the modern loft? It's just emptying out my alts FC room to get ready for next week's thing. Ah, yes, 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 yes. I'll be so I'm going to work on getting the details ironed out for the challenge build thing by next Monday. And then I will do my best to uh, get that all ready to rock and roll next Monday. Oh, this is goldsmithing? The heck? Also, Selena, I did see you there. One moment. Let me just craft these while my brain is in uh, craft mode. And I will be right there with you. Hold on. Hello, I see you, I see you. Oh, that's the FC chest. Um, 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 Let me fix this. Hold on, you're gonna get kicked off of this thing, Zanny, in a second. Uh, let me just fix this. Wood, blah, 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 blah. Go. Oh, that bugs me. Urgh. That's irksome. Uh, I will fix this. Let's see here. Can I do... See, stuff like that, where it's like not quite aligned, makes me want to do like, push this outward even more. Probably okay though. It's not that not that big a deal. Could just shove the whole thing out. Make it aligned like that. That's a level. Oh, that's not even. Damn it. It's okay. Honestly, I'll probably be shifting a bunch of this stuff around anyway. Because uh, I do need to create the false ceiling. So I'm going to be using double feather beds as well as tier 4 aquariums to create the foundation for the ceiling. I also need some additional oriental round tables, if I remember correctly. Oriental round tables, which if I remember correctly are purchased here. It can be. Oh, uh. Oh wait, it was also the um the Hingen sitting desk. This one, Hingen City Table. We need one of these. 
And then we need interior chairs, beds, partitions. Is it other than oriental sitting table? Zabaton cushions. Wait, where? What the heck? Where is... These things are purchasable from Hakona, are they not? Oh, are they just really easily crafted? Is that it? I could have sworn these oriental round tables are um, purchasable. Or sorry, yeah, purchasable from the, the vendor. I guess not. Okay, I guess you have to craft them. A dance, the glow sticks, and the dote. Need the dote. Ah, yes, yes. For sure, Zanny. Yeah, no, that is the that is the club and starter pack for sure. Uh, oh, I see this. What is it? Yeah, you got to get the glow sticks and the dote for sure. And then you pick up a dance, plus like bees knees and stuff. Boom, ready to go. Ready to club. Let's see. Uh, elm lumber. Oh, okay, I see what it is. You just have to... I just have to by the um, elm lumber and beeswax. That's what it is. Is elm one of the ones that you got to go outside for? Ah, okay, that's okay. Here we go. Well, I'll get it in a second here. Um, beeswax. I think I need four of them. I'm using the oriental round table to create a small ornamental detail above the, on the ceiling. So that's what I need these things for. And uh, let's see, I think the actual supplier out here has different stuff than the inside one. If I remember correctly. Like, well, they have elm that too, but yeah, elm lumber. There it is. So here we go. Okay, elm lumber. Let's get twelve of these. I think. Oops. Uh, twelve. Come on. There we go. Or, uh, yeah. Oop I'm not sure if we'll actually need this many, but couldn't hurt to craft it. We can always sell some of these. Stranger than Wilson says, oh, oh no, my, uh, your aesthetic is typically modern. Modern lived in spaces. I'm just used to using darker colors here, trying to branch out and use something other than sit black and wine red. Yeah, that makes sense for sure. Definitely changing up the color palette. Honestly, color is very difficult, right? Like color science and like color theory. And like there's whole people whose like whole thing is just like figuring out how, like how to color interior design rooms and stuff. So honestly, I would say the structural in terms of like design, um, design of spaces and stuff, I I would definitely say that I'm much better structurally than I am necessarily color wise. Not that I'm bad color wise, but I definitely feel like I'm someone who um, doesn't often use like a lot of color as well. So I understand what you're saying, Strange and uh, Wilson, you know, that like I definitely feel like I could use to branch out color wise as well and kind of experiment with using other kinds of coloring methods coloring methods and color palettes and stuff okay so here's the thing what we're gonna do is
in order to make this as I guess like pixel perfect as I can get it so that everything's like flush with each other. Ah, uh, this this does bug me though with this outside. Oh, you know what? Okay, here we go. Here is a opportunity to use the new items. We are going to use the new wooden uh, skylights, right? This one, because it's way bigger. And we can use this as a wall mounted item as well. And we can create the full coverage out here with just the one here. And we can just rotate it and have it sitting this way. Bada boom, easy. Easy mode, we got this. Okay, we can fix this. So, what we need though inside, to make sure that the ceiling is as perfect as possible, is we're gonna need to lay out the feather beds and use them as the spacing unit with which we then create the rest of the walls to match the beds. This is how I've done it for all my other stuff as well. Okay. So I remember back when I first was building this, that the thing that I was concerned with was when you have these feather beds, they're really beautiful on the underside here, right? But they have the little pillows hanging down. So you have to figure out what to do with the pillows, basically. Otherwise you have these little white bits that are on the sides. Um, but the metal and the wood of the rest of the bed is really, really nice. So it's a design challenge problem. So the, the solution after a lot of fiddling that I came up with, I remember the first time around, was what's going to happen is there is a chandelier kind of, or like a overhead light fixture that runs from the front of the altar all the way to the back of the temple using um, primarily tier four aquariums to create the structure there. So what has to happen then is the feather beds, the white part is being created by the pillow or the, the overhanging blanket in the back there. So if we turn the blanket in towards where the aquarium is going to sit, right? So let's see, let me make sure this is halfway through this pillar. Okay, now that I know where that is, I can move us to the side. Actually, in fact, I can even do it like this. Okay, so what has what, what's going to happen, right, is there's going to be a tier four aquarium that's like this. Basically, right? There's going to be two of them and they're going to be very close to each other. So like about like that. And they're going to run the whole length here of the top and they're going to create this center channel. But this now means that we have a object, a very large object, with which to hide the feather beds. So we can take the feather beds and take the little blanket part that's over here and hide it within the aquarium, just like that. But that also means that the feather bed doesn't reach the full width of the temple walls area. So this means that we can double up the feather beds and do this. And by flipping them inverse from each other, we won't create the little pillow, uh, the little blanket won't show, shine through, right? So we can do this. And then we take these and flip them the opposite way and butt them up against each other. And that will create a seamless ceiling with none of the pillows showing. Uh, the, I keep saying pillows, but I mean blankets on the sides that are hovering over the edge. There we go. Okay, so this is not quite perfect though we got to figure this out i spent a stupid crazy amount of time when i was first building this temple again this is a rebuild of a build that i already did but i spent a crazy amount of time figuring this out the first time experimenting with different beds and different placements and stuff um because i wanted this thing to be like absolutely perfect 
So I'm going to be doing it a lot faster this time because I already kind of remember what I did. But we are going to, yeah, so it's basically this. So here we go. So that you can see. So what's going to happen here, right, is we're going to need to double these up, double the double feather beds, reflect them on this side. And there is actually going to be a gap potentially right here in the center, right in the center. But it's not going to be an issue because actually technically to bed meta something, you could even have a gap about as big as that. And the camera still won't go through this. So you don't actually need to have them technically all butted up against each other. But visually speaking, you would see the gap. Um, except that in this case, they are hidden by the aquarium, right? So we don't want the gaps over here because people can actually see this part. We do we do not need to worry about it so much here. Let's see, let me demonstrate what's, what I'm talking about there. If I perfectly inverse these across this mid, mid area, it'll be like th that, roughly. Right? And the fact that there is this little gap here is fine, is what I'm saying. Although we can put play with the positioning here to make sure that these are as flush as possible. Okay. What do I mean by that? Wait, let me get, um, where is my wood slats? Okay. Let's put these right in the middle of the room. That's the middle. That's, that's dead center. Okay. So as long as we know where dead center of the room is we can position everything else around that. And in addition to not wanting there to be any gaps on the sides here, I also ideally would like the metal trim that runs around the edge of the beds, right? It, it frames the edge of the beds. You see that, that black metal trim. Ideally, I want that black trim to all line up with itself or with the edges of the walls so that it looks like a tiny little line of support or like crown molding around the edge um the edge fringe of the walls so that way the wood from the beds isn't just kind of terminating like into the paper partitions right so if you see the paper partitions here i want the black metal of the beds to line up with where the edge frame of our walls are here so that way it creates like a nice little transition period between the the brown wood of the beds and then the wall itself. Otherwise, it's a very subtle thing, but it, it will look like the wood just flies into the paper partition. And I think if we can prevent that by, for example, you know, having the beds butt up like that, right? A, or some part of the bed butt up like this, then that would allow um, this area to be really clean looking. So this is, this is where I did this in my house as well for anybody who was over at my FC house. And I was like, uh, if you see the, the Japanese izakaya that I have there, same conundrum, same issue where it's like a puzzle. That one is even more complex. Cause it's got like a really, it's not just like a nice column. It's got like a I wrapped the beds around the bar, so I had to figure out the positioning of all the beds. Um, but this is this is like a design detail that I personally like really thinking through and trying to get correct. Um, where you're really trying to make sure this is as seamless as possible. Oh, uh, I realized I missed the second part of your message, Wilson, by the way. So the build is going well. Uh, got all the loft floating done a couple of days ago. The task now is trying to build a window in the kitchen using the new Gale partition. Oh, okay, cool. I can't wait to see what you come up with, Wilson. Let's see here. So...
So, like, something I always experiment with this here, right, is what if you you could overlap them, perhaps? Perhaps that is a strategy. Right? So just doing something like that. Uh, see, but then we don't get the... No, we don't want that, though. Because then the, the little parts will be sticking down again. The, the blanket will be sticking down. So there's an option to maybe do like this somehow, where you have just the, the side line there hitting this area. I know what some people end up doing is where the, the pillows are hanging down here, they overlap the beds like this. And then you put like a pill or a partition floated on top up, up up into the ceiling and you cover the little white parts on the sides here with a partition and you can create like a really seamless column that way and hide stuff. Let's see here. Oh, I realized I think my shader from last night, or not shader, it's not a shader, it's like just like a little, uh, increase the brightness thing is on still. Let me turn this off. There we go. It's a little too bright. Okay, okay, okay. Uh... I want to do this. Okay, referencing my um, original image here. Let's take a look at this. Let me blow this up a little bit too. There we go. Okay, so I'm taking a look at the original build that I did just to see how I did the ceilings here. Okay, so I can see there, you can see the feather beds coming through. The line of them and they're, they're disappearing here up into the tier four aquariums. And then also right here along the edge. Okay, actually, so I see what, what I did, what I ended up doing here, right, is instead of trying to create, use the metal edge, I used the, a little bit, a little lip of the paper partition showing, which is also black, um, to, if I, if I float it to the right height, it looks as though it has a sort of matching black gutter that can kind of match up with the beds and smooth over that transition bit. So it's it's more of a matter of floating up to the right height. So as a test, we can do... Da -da -da. Why didn't that work? Oh, right, because it was in my, not in my inventory. There we go. Boop, boop, boo. Oh man, okay. in the wrong thing. Let's 
please, Square Enix, let me lock items. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, there... Well, that's it's not quite perfect, because we need to also put these up. But, there, you can see how that ceiling is starting to form then, right? We'll need to get this a little bit um, more pixel-perfect looking. But, you can see there how... They're floating up. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. We just need to add the little bit that covers this edge. And make sure that it also seals up on either side here. Ideally, as seamlessly as possible. Wait, didn't I blow up? Oh, I blew up a wall over here. That's where it was. Uh, there we go. I think that's that's correct, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, so... Blah, 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 da, 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 da. Right, and then so you can see how when I have the tier 4 aquariums... Where are they? They will... When I float this up, right? This will hide. See how this... Once the tier 4 aquarium is floated just below the feather, uh, feather beds, it will hide the pillows hanging down there. I'm just going to keep calling them pillows, even though we all know it's blankets, right? And it also creates a continuous looking thing, right? So you can see how the altar then looks like it, with the with the brown wood and everything, gets pulled from the, from the back of the room all the way to the front of the room. And it creates like a running line down the center, with which we now suspend our lights. And it creates like a really nice ambiance and a mood and everything. And then on the... Uh, the sides then, it's just nice clean wood ceiling, and yeah, a lot of this is, is creating a focal point over to the altar, over to the front of the room. I realize you probably couldn't see some of that because I had the image up, but let me show that again. Okay, so, right? Double feather beds floated up, and then once you have the aquarium, you can see how when I float this upward, do you see here? Oh, here we go. Right, so if it was like this, that would be, you can still see the pillows slash blankets, but if I go one click below, boom, they're gone, and it looks seamless. So that's gonna be how this works, right? Hey, Aramor, what's up? Welcome back to the stream. How are you doing? And Mia, hello. Blankets can be pillows if you put in enough effort. That is true. Yeah, true. Very, very true. Fold up your blankets. Boom, pillows instantly. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay. I don't actually want these this high, though, and I'm going to need to buy more bed so I'm gonna need I had what is eight I need to probably buy another eight <laughs> welcome back to the stream Aramore how are you doing Pretty all right. Just got off a slam day at work. Ah, time to kick back and relax then, huh? Ready to relax and play some final? Ain't that a mood.
Okay, let's see. How can we make this I the ideal situation? So, thinking about the positioning of our walls here, right? Ideally, these beds actually, the little metal piece actually lines up with this, the where these seams are. In a perfect world, they would. So actually, can we can we get that to happen? If we do this. Maybe even an overlap? Oh, are you kidding me? Is it because the pillar is there? Grr. I can fix that, though. Let's do this. Okay, so... There we go. So if we just actually overlap the beds a little bit, this is going to create a double double metal bracket line. And so if it was... Because the metal runs all around the edge, if we had it like this, where it's perfectly paired up, we'll have a single metal beam running through. But if we just double... If we just do this, we'll have a double metal beam. Which still looks really good, I think. And though we can make it now line up with this pillar. And then also the double metal beam here will frame this line. And I think that then, then can reflect even over to here. Um, right, so if we go that, that reflects right there. Cool. And then where does that put actually our edge over this way. Let's see, let's see. Okay. That's not too bad. Actually, that lines up pretty much with the edge over here. Okay. So if we use this... Oh, uh, I guess maybe worth worth asking. So, does anybody here not know what bed meta is? Because that's kind of important to this whole thing. And it's also actually, I would I would argue, it's quite good to know what that is in general if you're getting into housing. Bed meta, my beloved. Right, Mia? Yeah, exactly. Heck, okay, I'll just... I'm just gonna say it anyway, uh, even if most people here probably do know. But in case you don't know what bed meta is, or in case you are someone watching this VOD in the future on YouTube, um, what bed meta is, is... When... When you're in the game, and you're running around in a, in a build, right? Your camera can go through objects like this, right? So this can be quite confusing or even disorienting for people if they're moving through your custom build that has a lot of fake walls or fake ceilings and stuff going on, right? And the thing about this is, like, so you can imagine here, if I have a loft, right? And there's like a fake uh, loft. Wait, did I just boop someone out of existence? Someone was sitting here and they're completely gone now. Did I just fire you up to the the abyss? Oh my god. I'm so sorry if I just pooped someone out of existence there. Um But so look, so if you have um if, if you have a fake ceiling for say, right? Like a wooden loft here, right? But I, will, I can walk under this right now, and you can still see up above it. And in fact, I can pull my camera through it like this, right? So you can imagine if you have a bunch of other custom decorations and stuff in your custom ceiling, that it could really be very jarring and very confusing for someone whose camera is like, you walk in underneath this custom ceiling, and your camera pulls through, and you're like, oh crap, there's like beds and stuff, and there's other decorations pulling to the ceiling. You don't want that, right? 
So what we do in housing is a thing called bed meta, where for whatever reason, your camera can't push through certain items in the game, like certain walls and certain beds. So walls might be something like a stage panel. Your camera can't push itself through those or, you know, fake partitions. You can't push through, but also beds for, for whatever reason. And what this allows us to do is check this out. Right, if I float these up. I messed that up. There you go. Okay, so now if I have these beds here, right? An interesting thing happens where if I now have a ceiling made of fake beds, watch uh, th my camera zoomed way out like this. Watch what happens when I walk underneath the beds. See how my camera snapped down? And now I'm scrolling out with my wheel and I can't scroll out any farther. And it means that my camera automatically gets pushed in below the beds and it won't go through them. So this is why we call this bed meta where Either you build your ceiling out of beds or you put beds just above your fake ceiling. So, for example, if I really liked the, the look of this wooden loft, what I would do is maybe something like this, where I would have my wooden lofts, right? Um, and then right above them, I'd have the beds, right? So see how right there, you can't really see the beds anymore? So now if I had my wooden loft, which, as you remember, I previously could pull the camera through. Now, if um, if I was to... Actually, I need to show it outside of the housing menu. Oh, actually, no, I have it here. So yeah, so here's my wooden loft. Now, with the, with the beds just above the loft, it will do the same thing, where if I have my camera zoomed out, if I walk under here, boom, it goes under. But now, the bottom underneath here only looks like the loft, except for these little bits. Well, we could fix that, right? We could fix the little feet hanging down. But this is bed meta. This is creating custom ceilings that don't break your immersion by having the camera glitch through the custom ceiling and revealing all your secrets up there. So it's something for people who want to build more immersive builds um, and especially really complex stuff with like custom ceilings and things. It's very important to learn something like bed meta in order to be able to address that. And now you know, for anybody who did not. Little housing 101 lesson for you. And so the thing about the bed meta though, right, is... Yeah, I'm going to put this down just like that. That's fine. There we go. Um, so the thing about using certain beds is in this case, you could see how bed meta could get really pricey slot wise, because you might end up using a lot of beds in addition to all your fake ceiling stuff, which could end up meaning your ceiling is basically like almost like double slots. And if you have a really big build with a lot of custom ceiling work going on, that could end up being a lot, a lot of slots. <laughs> So part of the name of the game in housing is trying to be really efficient, right? And so that's where like what I'm doing here. I was building this in a small originally and I was trying to be as efficient as possible. And so I wanted to come up with a ceiling that was bed meted, but that used as few items as possible. And so a classic thing to do is something like this with, um, with using the beds as the actual ceiling and then just working to hide bits of the bed you don't want. And then that way you get all the benefits of bed meta, but you also get a custom ceiling and it's all using the same items. So there you go. Welcome back to the stream, Brendan. And hello, Kara. Welcome back to the stream as well. We are building, rebuilding my Japanese feudal temple that I originally built in my small back in the day. Back when I lived next to Roth, and back when I first had built, or was about to build Ichi, I built this first, and I think 
quite possibly this is the reason I got the gig to build Ichi. And the rest is history, as, as they say. Okay. If I use this... Da, 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 da. Okay, I think this is actually... Look, this is pretty solid in terms of the start. Another way that we could do this... Let's see. So when I have these double feather beds over here, they're inverted, right? They're inverted against the other ones. So I was talking about how I wanted to ideally figure out a way to get them the metal. I don't know. That might not work, though. That might just not really be feasible. Yeah, I think the simplest solution is just to do this. All right, we'll go with the, simple, with the simplest solution here, because I think that will actually work just fine for our purposes. So there we go. We're going to lay out the whole ceiling, and then we're going to float the whole thing up, and then we'll go from there. Uh, okay, um, there. Overlap. And I have one more bed. There it is. Whoop. There it is. Beautiful. I didn't even have to place from storage. Okay. Now, just time to float these all up. Can I be really efficient with this? I think so. See if I can hit a bunch of these beds at the same time. Boy. Oh, right. Uh, there we go. Okay, hold on a sec, everybody. I I think I see some chats going on the quarter of my eye here, but I'm going to concentrate here so that I don't accidentally blow up any walls and stuff, which I still might do anyway. I can be really efficient on the next bit. Ooh. I could have done this in four sets, but that's okay. I'll be a little inefficient. Okay, that's too low. So right now the bed, the ceiling actually looks at about the right height, but we got to remember that we do have the troop stages that we are still going to be floating right? So, or floating on top of, standing on top of. So this ceiling needs to be higher. And I think as I was talking earlier about, we want this to fill flush with the paper partitions top black bar there. So probably go a little too high. There we go. So, in order to make this feel as seamless as possible, right, we want the little black metal bits to feel like they seamlessly transition over here into an edge on this paper partition. But to do that, let me first just get the bits all floated up, and then we can adjust accordingly. Oh, 
Oh, almost, almost, almost. One more. Although, actually, that might be fine. Um, I think it needs to actually be lower. There you go. Perfect. Beautiful. And... Bring this over here. There we go. That should work. Beautiful. go you can see there how our, our custom ceiling is coming together right very nice very nice okay welcome back liara Let's see. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm going to try to do this very efficiently. Oh. Unless I can't grab the loft. There it is. Oh, crap. Round wooden loft letting me down. Really? There we go. go there we go it's all coming together Okay, yeah, see, so what I want to do is raise every, lower everything by one click. So you can see how, how over here, these are raised a little too high. 
And this transition between the beds and the ceiling doesn't feel very natural, right? That feels kind of abrupt. Or it just doesn't quite feel as natural as looking over here, right? You can see how the black little hanging bit of metal feels like a little bit more like almost like it just blends into the edge here. Especially when you consider that the lighting is actually going to be like this or something, right? And you're going to have a lot more just dim glow of light. And people won't really be able to see that very well. Um, so I think that will create just like a really nice transition there. There we go. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. Oh. What? Oh, I see. It's not far. There we go. Need to be able to hit the the center point of the beds and I was not able to hit that there. There we go. That should be good. Is that even? Are those not even? Oh my gosh. That uh that's frustrating where you have um these, like the grid snap doesn't actually grid snap exactly the same. Which is definitely kind of annoying. Um, okay, hold on. Yeah, there we go. Like. Is that better? Those even now? Are they still not even? Erg. Can you use a potion rack? Um, yeah, I don't know. I can go perfect that later. I don't want to. I don't want to bog the stream down too much with that at the moment. Let's just make sure we get all this at least positioned first. So. Generally speaking. Okay. Oop. Oh, but, uh... Oof. Camera. Please. There we go. Okay, what we can do is this. Okay, whoa, hold on. I got a, got a weird angle here as I'm looking at this. There we go. that not snap? Oh yeah, I think. Uh, I'm not quite. There we go. Uh, a lot of this is trial and error. You're gonna mess it up a little bit. It's okay. Uh... That didn't grab the first bed. Okay, I 
think that did it. Oh. Ugh. Okay, there we go. That's pretty much our custom ceiling. I'll, I'll hammer it out there. Oh. Gotta rotate. I'm being extra careful and rotating like a million times, but you don't actually need to rotate that many times. All you gotta do is click on and off. There we go. Okay. Bam, bed metted. Uh, I'm gonna go out to lock it. I don't think I have a, a new journey on me at the moment. So I'll just go outside, let them lock, come back in, boom. Oh, that's new, using the circular loft as a, a circular loft being used to float. Yep. You can use the square one or the circular one, although to be honest, I will highly recommend you use the square one just because it's so much easier to visualize what you're hitting. But it's not a big deal. The thing, the nice thing about the circular one is that it's on the NPC vendor, so super cheap and easy to get. See, it's not... Oh, these are not aligned. That's okay, though. We can fix that. The main thing here... Is here we go. So you can see, here we go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Go tier four aquarium. Da, 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 da. Okay. Aquarium. Oh, camera. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ah. Okay, I'm going to do this just to show what it looks like, but I'm going to need to pull these down anyway because otherwise it's going to be an absolute nightmare to, um, to do some other things in here. Okay. There we go. Boom. Oh. oh. Okay. So basically. Oh my god, I just punched you up into the ceiling again, maybe. Uh, hold on. 
Sorry. Elevators, you know? Um. There we go. Okay, so that's a little bit rough, but there is our full ceiling. Pretty much, right? And you can see how all of the pillows or the blankets that are hanging that would would be hanging down from the feather beds are completely gone. And so it just looks like a seamless ceiling. And if I tilt my camera up and I try to zoom out, I cannot. I am completely sealed into this box now, right? And now if I add back in our troop stages, wherever those went. So really ideally you want to add the aquariums in last just because of the way that they work. Oh gosh. So you're gonna... So a lot of this ends up being that you need to like layer it in a particular order because otherwise it just creates all these problems of not being able to place items. So for example right now um, all the aquariums are now snapped to uh, probably a bunch of items so like this is now snapped to this troop stage. So if I move the troop stage, I move the aquarium, which is kind of annoying. Um, and this is why I was sa I'm saying like, you would need to figure out probably the order of operations to lay this stuff down. Because now, um, I gotta just be really careful about like what I'm moving around. But you can also use this to your advantage. Okay, here's a fun trick. Um, so I mentioned here that you're like, oh, I floated this custom ceiling and it's in position. Okay, see, like, see how it's off now? It's because I put this troop stage down and then I nudged it over, right? So it was it was probably originally placed down right there, or no, uh, right there. And then I was like, I adjusted it, I placed it down and then I nudged it over. And just doing that brought the aquariums with it. So what you need to do is, so I'm disconnecting, nudging this over, and now they're aligned again, right? Now, if I exit the housing menu for a second, I let the aquariums snapped to the troop stage, right? So what I actually ended up doing when I was building the small, and you can do this trick in a large or other buildings too, but it's, it's going to be a little bit tricky because I'm in an apartment and it's so tight in here, like there's so little space. But if you have a medium or a large especially, or even a small, where you have a lot of extra room, you can do this. Position your, for example, aquariums, an item that snaps really crazily, right? It's like snapping all the way down to the troop stage. But now that you have it in position, use this troop stage as a lock. Take the whole troop stage and just move it somewhere else. Right? So if this was in my large or something, I would just put this whole troop stage on the upper floor where I'm not building, then fiddle around with everything else that I need to do in the build, and then right at the very last bit, right, I know exactly where this troop stage needs this troop stage needs to go. So right at the end, I'll just go run up, grab the troop stage that's been sitting in some back corner way away from everything that I'm building, and then it's, you know, it's been just like over here, blah blah. Let's just imagine, oh, I'd put it like over here somewhere. Blah, blah, blah. Then when the time comes, all I do is I grab it, run all the way back down the stairs, just go, okay, where's the trip stage? It needs to go right there. Lock it back in. Bam. My ceiling comes with it. So that's a fun little trick that you can use when you are building, um, especially in, in houses, I would say, because you'll have extra room to put stuff around. So that's very useful if you find that you have a really complex amount of things that are floated up that are tabletop items that will snap is give them a surface to snap to that you know the exact grid position um, of the item or where they need to go. Let them like put a loft right below that on a wood slat. Let them all snap to that loft. Move the loft on a perfect grid snap, mind you. Then uh, move the loft somewhere else. 
and then just know, mark that position and move it back to that exact grid snap right at the end. Disconnect all the items from the loft and boom, you have a perfectly frozen in time, I guess, like set of items. Also, I think you guys can see how this is kind of coming together, right? You can see the the temple being uh, formulating itself here. Uh oh, why did that not go? Come on. There we go. So you can, I think, now with the with the troop stages and the ceiling in place, you can really start to see the temple coming together, right? Especially now here, I'll put some lights in, right? This is not where they're gonna end up going, but. Right, here we go. Oop. There it is. <laughs> so I walk in here. And we'll again, we'll have to fix fix the aquariums and such like that, right? But you can see how there we go. Walk up in here. Boom. A lot of scuff and weirdness on the walls and everything. I gotta reposition them. But there you can see how. This feels all enclosed. If I move my camera around, you can't see anywhere. Beautiful, right? And then we need to put our samurai armor in here and create the altar and then create our ceiling fixture. And we also need to change all of these into Lollafels. So that way that they are hidden below the troop stage and you can't even see that they're holding open all these paper partitions right now. Cool, cool, cool. What do you guys think so far? For for those, especially for those of you maybe in the room here with me, how does that, how does that feel? Ooh, I see that there's, see, I see, see here's a detail, right? Is like, the, the feather beds are poking through the walls here. So this is something I'll need to address where I, clean up work is like, you gotta pull these forward a little bit, right? We'll have to end up doing like, uh, just a, just a hair, like, da, 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 da. Why is that, uh, you know, you just pull it forward. There you go. You can see it kind of just starts to disappear. So we'll have to just probably do that even more. Something like that. Uh, I'll have to fix that so that way you can't see that at all. And then, yeah, you'll, it's, it's compared to that, right? You don't want any of that kind of crap showing. Although, depending on what we do for the outside here, it might not even matter. Uh, you might not even be able to tell, like, what's... that those little bits are hanging out, you know? Oh, here's another here's another thing is that you could push these walls out right way more you could make the temple wider and then it could actually address the beds thing right where um we 
was saying how the edge of the bed. Um, well, actually, oh, I guess you would still have the, the, the blankets coming down, so it's only so far out that you could take this. Ugh, I can't grab this other one. Come on. There we go. Right. So you can see how um, this side of the room is quite a bit bigger now than this side of the room. So you could make, yeah, I guess the temple space in here bigger, which we maybe we could do. That could be interesting. Let's see, how are we on items? How are we, item slots? 64. See, ah, uh, see. So here's the thing is uh, you want to make sure that you you know, always account for your item slots. So you, we still need, let's see in here, probably at least 12 item slots for the altar area, 10 slots for the ceiling with the lights. So uh, we're gonna put four Chochin lanterns here, four Chochin lanterns here, a oriental round table here, an oriental round table here. It just adds a little bit of detail. So that's, that's 10 right there, right? So um, 10 slots for that little lighting bit. King and armor here, king and armor here. Two more slots, that's 12. Oriental altar here, 13. Uh, the glade drawer table, which would go, you can't see it, but it's gonna be loaded up so that we create the little altar bit. Um, and then also the sitting table. Uh, 13, 14, 15. Null, thal, lectern. To create the little extra glow, I think. And also to create the base that the altar sits on top of. <laughs> that's, that's it. 15, 16. Candles to add ambiance. Uh, 17, 18. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Oh, um, fixing the front here so it doesn't look just kind of boring. So probably at least like four or five slots at least here. So two pawns on either side up floated up to create a false ceiling. Either a wool combed rug here to be gravel or arguably another pond. Um, right, if we did... that so actually that could be really cool if we can do this and create a water walkway over which that we walk to get to the temple this is this would kind of emulate what i did with my original temple design which was to have the temple kind of suspended out above like as if it's almost like built on stilts stilts or something the only problem with this is i don't think that Apartments play nicely with letting you um, load in on top of stuff, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's kind of restrictive in that way. Let's see here. Uh, what's the easiest way to do this? Ah, I know. Wood slat. I apologies, uh, Vincent. I'm going to pull this out from under you. Right, so that's definitely not going to work. I think we could even go lower, though. Okay, if I go as low as I can get with this thing. Let's see what happens if I load back in, if I will load on top of the loft. I don't think I will though. But if I did, and we could figure out something to pop you up, then 
then we could maybe create the suspended walkway, but I don't know if that's feasible. I think it might be a lot more reasonable to just go with having like a gravel walkway that you walk up the stairs onto the temple, which I mean, honestly makes a lot of sense with temple wise. Oh, hey, I am on top of the loft. Okay, so I did load on top of this loft. Compared to the pond, where does that place me? Yeah, see, so if I place the pond... Okay, how does that end up looking? So the loft would need to be a little bit higher to be even above the water. I'm pretty sure the loft is going to end up needing to be higher than these things are willing to let us do. Okay, so... Honestly, I can place this pond down. It's not a big deal. Okay. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's go just above the water. Is that just above the water? Okay. Let's see if I pop up on top of the loft, I, I, the, the troop stage. I don't think I will, though. Oh, no, that was a loft. It wasn't troop stage. As soon as you turn on the lights, the whole vibe changes. Yeah, right? It's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty cool when just just the lighting change. Honestly, just changing the light is like already a world of difference. Hey, there we go. I am standing on top of it. That's fun. Okay, so maybe we can actually make this little waterway. In fact, even with the little... Honestly, I kind of like the little... that you get a little splishy-splashy here. Um, although, I don't know, wet socks going into a temple could be really weird. So, this does raise the point that perhaps we could create a little custom walkway here with which you enter the temple and it's over the top of some water hmm okay okay Hold on, brain going, brain thinking. Um, oh, uh, sorry, I just missed, I missed the see. Um, Trying to see things lined up in the air after floating is one of the most challenging things. Ah, yeah. If I'm up on a custom second floor trying to see an angle or alignment, my brain just says move one step when the camera is not cooperating and fall through. Ah, yeah, 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 Brendan. Yeah, it's it's um it's definitely tricky. It's something you got like it comes with practice and like just experimenting, trying to figure out the optimal way to position yourself camera wise and position wise to like <laughs> click on stuff like also once you've floated things sometimes being able to grab them to rotate them and lock them in place is like a whole nother animal ah see so here's a here's a cleanup de detail 
I'm gonna nudge all of the aquariums forward, especially into this wall going forward this way to clean up this area here. And then also ideally this little line would line up with these lines, right? Oh yeah, actually, I could even demonstrate that just by going like this. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. It'd be like that. If uh, that would be to get it flush with that wall right there. Part of the problem is that the aquariums cannot overlap with each other due to some weird light rendering issue problem that they tried to address in the past. So that's why I can't just overlap these the same way I overlap the edges of the beds here. But let's see, I think we can... Up, up, up. Honestly, based off of what we do, I think some part of what we end up doing out here, like if we end up using this as our custom ceiling. Oh, forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, yeah, fun fact with bed meta, for whatever reason, the Eastern indoor ponds also do the bed meta thing. So they are the biggest item in the game, I think, that does bed meta. And so you can actually create custom ceilings with, with Eastern indoor ponds and they do the whole camera blocking thing. So they're very efficient slot wise to block the camera. Um, and so here we go, you know, you could do like this and create a custom ceiling out here, which actually might be what I go for to create this sort of like cave look, almost like it's built in a cave or something. That could be very cool. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Hey, what's up, Amphi? Welcome back to the stream. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, huh? Recreating my my temple from in the past. In an apartment, though. Ooh. So... Da, 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 da. Ah, yes, and you're correct, Zanny. If I was to use the Eastern Indoor Ponds for the entire ceiling, it would free up some slots. Although I don't... I personally would like to have the interior of the temple still looking like this. It's just that the exterior would be able to have, you know, just the cave-like look. But you are right that also for a lot of custom ceilings, if... If you are hiding, if you are completely hiding the beds above the ceiling to get the bed meta effect and that's all you want, then using Eastern Indoor Ponds is a really good way to save on slots because, yeah, they cover a huge amount of area uh, with, with bed meta effect with minimal slot usage. So, yeah, really good. You like the idea of a natural ceiling? Amphi? So when you say natural ceiling, you mean like the idea of this being like the exterior as you walk in here is inside a cave or something, right? Like it's hidden, a hidden shrine in the mountains or something versus versus a Zen garden or something very man-made looking, right? Yeah. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. I am in agreement. You know, interestingly, I might even think about now that I'm going to, if I'm going to do this custom entryway walkway, I might end up pulling, let's see.
I might be able to actually pull everything forward because I did notice that where I have um, with with if I was to use the eastern indoor ponds, it will not quite go edge to edge here. I'll have a little gap, I think, right on either side. I th think actually is that not the case? Oh my god! Wait, is this actually going to work perfectly? Oh, there's an ever so slight little gap on the edge. But that's okay, actually, I guess. Mm, I might be able to get away with pulling this entire build once one grid snap forward. And if I do that, first of all, this might line up a little better with these pillars because there's this little gap and it looks like a mistake. But if I nudge the entire build forward, I'll have to do, redo the ceiling. I'll probably, I might, I might honestly rebuild this whole thing off stream. This, this much of it off stream, just to pull everything forward a little bit. Yeah, and these pillars could line up better with this too. And it would allow a completely seamless stone ceiling on the edge here. I kind of like that idea. Okay. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I'll probably pull the whole thing forward. And now that we're having the custom walkway thing too, you're, it's not as dream, it's, it's gonna still be a little bit like you load like right in front of these stairs, like right in front of the entryway to the temple, which is a little unfortunate. I, I did really like that in the small, you actually had the full effect of walking down the steps into the basement where the temple was. And similar to like Prominence or some of the other builds I have, you get to do the little like turn the corner and you get the sort of impact view of the whole thing. And it also allowed you to walk very cleanly out onto the walkway outside the temple before you actually walked in. So in this case, you're probably going to load it and you're going to be like right there, you know? Um, and like basically right about to walk into the temple, which might be a little bit annoying, but I think one grid snap forward is not going to throw that off too much, and especially if it really helps to seal up everything. So, heading off to your static. Take care. Okay, see you, Aramore. Sorry, see you, Aramore. I'll see you hopefully this weekend at some of the events. Oh, of which, um, worth worth noting uh, for anybody who was planning to come see me at some of the events this weekend. One of them um, is now canceled. So actually, I believe Saturday's, unfortunately, it's a Saturday one, but the Saturday event was last minute canceled. So I will have to adjust that. The Twisted Destiny one, they're closing their venue or something for the weekend. I don't I don't really know why. I just got a message from the owner uh, telling me that something. Oh, yeah, something came up IRL. So they have to close the weekend, uh, close for the weekend. So. Saturday, I will not have that original plan stream, but maybe we can do something else. I don't know. Let's we'll see. Let's see how that unravels. Maybe we can we can do a little something anyway. But all the other streams are still on. So Friday night, um, quite late at Meow Juana, and then over Sunday at the Prominence Garden Party. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, and I will get work on getting a hold of the Oriental Altar and everything for the, the actual altar. I think, okay, so um, I know we are heading right up into the into time here. And actually, I cannot stay extra long today. I need to do a few things. So I think I will adjust this for Monday. Monday's stream and on Monday's stream what I want to do is I will we will launch the challenge build I believe on this coming Monday so Monday yeah 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 so in case anyone's not aware so what the plan is for the challenge build thing is um, it's the idea of you know 
five artists draw the same portrait or five photographers take the same photo. Um, and it's going to be five designers design the same theme, basically. So I'm going to be asking for people who have their own apartments to basically, if, if you would like, um, I'm going to ask for submissions where I'm going to give a theme, a prompt rather, for a build. And then everybody's going to build to that build in an apartment and using no third party tools. And then everybody has to submit what they have by probably Thursday. So I'll be telling you on Monday, you'll submit by th before Thursday. And then that way we can tour all the people's builds and just see what they came up with in the time frame. Um, I have to work out a little bit of the details, but I want to launch that maybe next week. And this is based off of both. Some people uh, probably have seen this done on like YouTube, where it's like, again, like five photographers take the same photo. And then within the housing scene, uh, there is a lovely gal uh, by the name of Tonkatsu Udon uh, on Twitter. And she, at least to my knowledge, is the, the first person I've seen who brought was talking about bringing that idea into the housing space. And she did a, I think it was coffee shop at the edge of the universe prompt theme, um, which is, I believe, a play on restaurant at the end of the universe um, of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. And so she did it on Twitter where she was like, here's a hashtag, submit your builds under the theme to this hashtag. And um, it's a fantastic idea. And it definitely like, brings up the idea of, yeah, the idea of a bunch of artists doing the same build. So I'm going to do it a little bit more structured than she had it. She had it very much like anyone just to submit to this hashtag and we're going to kind of run this from this time frame. But I think to make it a little bit more trackable for me, I'm going to have it be everybody who wants the prompt is going to be told at the same time on Monday. And then I'm going to require that submissions be in by, you know, a certain time frame. And I'm going to need everyone to submit like a, a very clear screenshot of where their build is at, at the end time frame. And then that way, everybody has the exact same amount of time. Everybody's building in an apartment, so they have the same amount of slots. Nobody's allowed to use third party tools. If I see any build that has any blatant use or obvious use of third party tools, or I, I don't know, honor system, you know, um, but um, yeah, then you'll be disqualified, I guess. And yeah, it's not really a competition so much as just a celebration of creativity and, and seeing what people can come up with. So yeah. Yeah, Amphi, you should do it. Um, you don't know if you'll have time. Yeah, I. so I'm, I might, I might actually want to chat with you, Amphi, and, and I'm going to get some, some input about this, maybe off stream. I'm trying to figure out maybe the timing on how long I should let people build for because I understand, you know, that not everybody can just drop what they're doing and spend 48 hours like building away, right? Like I get that there's people have jobs and <laughs> lives and things happening. Um, so maybe, you know, doing it like releasing it next Monday and then saying stop by Thursday is a little bit too quick for people to really go all in. So it might be something like you have a full week, you know, I'll give you the prompt on Monday and then what you'll have till the following Monday or something or maybe later. Um, but maybe, yeah, I'll have to, I'm, I'm still working out the details. But I will continue building this feudal temple and either finish it on next Monday, but honestly, probably per perfecting it and stuff, it'll probably even go all the way till just next Thursday. Because I mean, yeah, you know, I, I don't need to bum rush this. If I finish it by next Monday, I finish it. If not, then yeah, we'll go and do it on Thursday, uh, Monday and Thursday of next week. And I'll kick off the that um, housing challenge. And maybe then that will be, yeah, the housing challenge stuff will unfold the following week. We'll do the tours of any builds that were submitted. And then and then it'll get us into October and it'll be time to build some spooky builds and get a spooky tour uh, together. And um, haunted haunted houses, you know, uh, witches, hut, huts, whatever you want to create, 
or the October housing tour. Fun, cool. So I think we'll probably do, um, yeah, I'll figure this out and I will create like a little marketing card or something like that that will let everybody know what's going on. And I'll post about it in the Discord, first and foremost. As always, the best way to keep in contact with me and know what's coming up, upcoming events, upcoming streams, whether they be housing or DJ stuff, is to join me there at my Discord. Would love to have you in there. We have a housing section where people are nerding out about housing, including myself. We're talking about designs, we're sharing our designs, um, and there's also places to keep in contact and up to date with Prominence and Obsidian, my two nightclubs, and all my DJ streams. So that's going to be all for this housing stream today. We'll pick up again next Monday. I will talk to you guys in the Discord. Uh, once again, I got some DJ shows this weekend. Tomorrow night and technically Saturday morning if you're PST. Um, so 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. Saturday morning, which is technically, you know, Friday night, tomorrow night. Um, PST. I'm playing at Meow Juana over here on Crystal. And that's a bit later in the night. So that's, what is it, 9 to 12? Oh, no, no. That's that's 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. EST. Um, so for those of you who are night owls, there you go. Um, and then if you are available on Sunday, though, there will be the Prominence Garden Party. And I highly, highly recommend you come to that if you have not ever come to that before, or if, you know, obviously if you're a regular, you already know. Um, that is, nope, that's not correct, this one. Here you go. This Sunday, September 18th, from four to 6 p.m. PST, over at Prominence. Here's the address right below there. Would love to have y'all. It's gonna be like basically chill sunset vibes um to house music so melodic house music out at sunset sipping on a beer that's the vibe it's very chill relaxing uplifting um so not not like that crazy club energy it's much more like pretty and just uh yeah hanging out um recovery sunday is how i always like to describe it so if you're interested in that would love to have you out at that or see you out at something else that we do yeah cool Thank you, everybody, for coming to the stream today. Sorry for sounding a little bit tired. Uh, I, I hope I still was able to be entertaining and hopefully you learned some stuff. And hopefully you're excited to see where this build goes. Although technically, I guess you can see exactly where it's going because I'm rebuilding from my previous build. But um, yeah, thank you, everyone, for coming to the stream. And I will see you all either next Monday or maybe on one of the DJ sets slash inside the Discord. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and thank you again to Selena, by the way. If I don't know if you're still in here, but thank you for the resub. Subscribing for six months. You ranked up to the next uh, subscriber badge even, next to your name. And also for gifting the sub to Ray. I very much appreciate that. But yeah, I will catch you all later. Have a wonderful resting of your uh, evening. Good evening and good night, everyone. <laughs>